Hi, everybody. We're back. Um, we want to remind everyone of that experiential learning is the same thing as uh, learning through reflection. That's basically the, de the definition. Uh, and to remind everyone again, the uh, focus is on the process, okay, uh, where the uh, teacher and the student interact, okay? So the student... and the teacher uh, interact. I mean, you can have experiential interact. There you go. Uh, you know that you can have uh, experiential education uh, without teacher and student interaction. Uh, where the student themselves can be the uh, individual that's uh, learning through the experience. And of course, the important thing is that this interaction, we know of it because uh, the student uh, reflects, okay? And this reflection is an important part of the uh, of this experience. Um, David Colby, and we're going to concentrate now on uh, David Colby here. Uh, let me put his name so that you all know who we're talking about. Uh, or maybe it's pronounced David Kolb. Uh, he had some, uh, we're going to put it like this, because he had some requirements that uh, he used, there you go, I fixed that, requirements for uh, learning through uh, experiential uh, learning activities. Uh, the first thing is that he said the, uh, the learner Let me see if I can put this all together. The learner must be willing must be willing to interact, okay? Um, to be uh, involved, uh, to be actively involved in any of these uh, activities so that's kind of the first requirement that he said uh, that uh, you know we needed to have in order to have a good high quality um, learning experiential learning process uh, he also said that uh, the learner must be uh, able to reflect now some people and y'all are gonna find out basically just describe and they don't really get involved in the process of reflection in other words using what they learn for other things we're gonna see that also the learner uh, must uh, possess okay Uh, must possess and use, okay, and use uh, analytical skills. And you need these analytical skills uh, basically to conceptualize uh, the... Um, the experience. What did the experience really mean for them? Uh, the fourth thing is that uh, the learner must uh, possess decision-making skills. Oh, I should have, hold on. That must possess 
uh, decision making skills. You're kind of wondering why decision making, uh, but in uh, environmental education or in many of these experiences, you want to have students who are critical thinkers, and so they have to have decision making skills and uh, problem solving skills. Okay. makes sense right uh, in order to use those uh, those new ideas uh, so you have to use those new ideas uh, and remember uh, the other terms that that we used uh, yesterday that we talked about such as uh, miss education if a student does not possess uh, many of these uh, requirements, uh, oftentimes miseducation uh, is the result and uh, no one wants to be uh, miseducated. So, you know, you got to look at that. Okay, in the next uh, series, what we're going to do is we're going to be talking about Colby's uh, original model, and uh, uh, we'll see you then. Okay, good luck.